Origin of violence and aggression. Violence is heterogeneous, it can be impulsive, reactive or defensive, or it can be predatory, remorseless aggression. Violent behaviors can be related to intoxication from alcohol or psychosis or other neuropsychiatric conditions like traumatic head injury. Violent acts may be the result of personal or a cultural belief system. Violence can be sexualized or directed at a specific victim or at a specific group. The brain mediates all human behavior, and the biological properties of the brain are the result of genotype and developmental experiences. Aggression is not violence, an aggressive person may not be violent. Aggression is a behavior characterized by verbal or physical attack, it may be appropriate and self-protective or destructive and violent. The complex set of behaviors recognized as aggression has been studied in man and animals for many years and have examined various aspects of the neurobiology of aggression. Complexity of violence means that there is a complexity of neurobiology. The neurobiology of aggression studied leads to little insight into the neurobiology of racism or misogyny or anti-Semitism. Many violent behaviors are the result of a defensive response to perceived aggression. The neurobiology of fear holds as many important clues to prevention and interventions related to violence as the neurobiology of aggression. The neurobiology of hate or ideology remain unstudied, as there are neurobiological mediators of aggression, there are neurobiological mediators of ideology. The human brain mediates all human behavior, such as aggression, violence, fear, ideology, and all human emotional behavioral, cognitive and social functioning. This three-pound mass of 100 billion neurons and 1,000 billion glial cells is infinitely complex. Certain principles of brain organization and function can lead to insights regarding the neurological factors involved in violence and aggression. The brain has a hierarchical organization, from the lower, more simple areas to the more complex higher cortical areas. Simple, regulatory functions, like regulation of respiration, heart rate, blood pressure, body temperature are mediated by the brainstem and midbrain and the most complex functions, like language and abstract thinking by cortical structures. The brain's impulse mediating capacity is related to the ratio between the excitatory activity of the lower, more primitive portions of the brain and the modulating activity of higher, subcortical and cortical areas. Cortical modulation ratio. Any factors which increase the activity or reactivity of the brainstem, such as chronic traumatic stress, testosterone, dysregulated serotonin or norepinephrine systems, or decrease the moderating capacity of the limbic or cortical areas, such as neglect, will increase an individual's aggressivity, impulsivity, and capacity to display violence. As the brain develops and the subcortical and cortical areas organize, they begin to modulate and control the more primitive and reactive lower portions of the brain. From the motor, sensory, emotional, cognitive and social experiences during infancy and childhood, when the brain mature develops, the human learn to tolerate frustration. A frustrated three-year-old will have a difficult time modulating the reactive, brainstem mediated state of arousal, he will scream, kick, bite, throw and hit. However, the older child when frustrated may feel like kicking, biting and spitting, but has the capacity to modulate those urges. Loss of cortical function through any variety of pathological process, like stroke, dementia, head injury, alcohol intoxication results in regression or loss of cortical modulation of arousal impulsivity, motor hyperactivity, and aggressivity, all mediated by lower portions of the central nervous system, brainstem, midbrain. Deprivation of key developmental experiences which leads to underdevelopment of cortical, subcortical and limbic areas will necessarily result in persistence of primitive, immature behavioral reactivity, and, thereby, predispose an individual to violent behavior. The most dangerous children are created by a malignant combination of experiences. Developmental neglect and traumatic stress during childhood create violent, remorseless children. 
this is characterized by sensitized brainstem systems, by serotonergic, neuradrenergic, and dopaminergic systems. Dysregulated brainstem functions, like anxiety, impulsivity, poor effect regulation, motor hyperactivity, are then poorly modulated by poorly organized limbic and cortical neurophysiology and functions, such as empathy, problem solving skills, which are the result of chaotic, under socialized development. This experience based imbalance predisposes to a host of neuropsychiatric problems and violent behavior. As we search for solutions to the plagues of violence in our society, it will be imperative that we avoid the false god of simple solutions. The neurobiology of complex, heterogeneous behaviors is complex and heterogeneous. Paying attention to the neurobiological impact of developmental experiences, traumatic or nurturing will yield great insight for prevention and therapeutic interventions. Thank you.